Thanks for staying with us. It's time now to go and lift off from the press uh, uh, to see the headlines that are making uh, the front pages of our national dailies. <laughs> okay, I got stuck there. Well, um, we're going to be looking at some of the newspapers and we'll see what the headlines are this morning. And joining us to discuss this uh, is Professor Camilo Sanifage. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning and thank you very much. Okay, so the papers today are screaming some headlines. So let's just begin with the very first uh, paper here on our lineup, and that is the Punch newspaper. The Punch newspaper leads with diesel price drops as Dangote sells 1,225 naira per litre, uh, supplies petrol uh, in May. The writers also on that story uh, that, or the writer is, that dealers get 1 million litres each at 1,225 naira per litre, price drops in Oyo. Lagos and Ogun. Your take, please. Yeah, um, this is a, a very good news, and um, that uh, the price of diesel is coming down, uh, even though it is not as uh, people expect it to be, but I think it's a, a good news because uh, diesel energy sources of uh, energy in Nigeria, and it is going in other sectors because you know like heavy uh, industries will now have the time um, than what they used to buy so i think the uh, impact of uh, this change uh, on the economy even though it may not be so drastic but uh thing that uh, we have uh, a, a drop in the uh, in this area mm, okay uh, well i should have even started with a smaller headline we've seen a 44 year old uh, being sworn in in senegal senegal president sworn in advocates africa's unity and security so um i'd like you to comment on that uh, what leaders went there in african uh, presidents went there. This is someone who has never held an elective position and uh, right now he's been sworn in as president of Senegal. What what do you think about that? 44 year old. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is a very good thing. You see, um, it is now taken as a, a little, we are having a break from uh, the usual thing in Africa where we have, uh, you know, people in their 70s and 80s contesting and winning uh, election. Now here in uh, Senegal, Ayus has been able to make it. And uh, this shows uh, a lot of things. Uh, number one, uh, you know, in the 60s, when we uh, emerged uh, as independent, most of the leaders were Ayus, and we saw what they did. Uh, with their uh, respective countries in terms of struggling for independence and in terms of providing purposeful leadership. So there is every hope that uh, the person, uh, the young person in Senegal will make it. And the second thing is that um, the youth in Senegal, uh, you know, have shown uh, that, uh, you know, they have impact on uh, the policy, I mean, the polity. Uh, because, you know, even the former president, Mikey Sell, uh, ride on, uh, you know, the support of the youth uh, to make it. And now the youth have, uh, despite the operation of uh, uh, the government, uh, especially Mikey Sell, when he turned against the youth, they are able to rally around behind one of them and uh, uh, they, they make it. So I think this is uh, this should be an eye opener and a lesson to the youth, not only in Senegal, not in the, only in Nigeria, but in Africa, uh, where our youth now are very pessimistic. So I think this will raise uh, their hope. But it is unfortunate that uh, world leaders are not there, uh, which shows that um, uh, most of them do not accept uh, uh, this person. Uh, okay, they, they do give him the 
uh, necessary support that uh, we, should, uh, we should have, but it is an internal affairs, it is a democratic thing which uh, we ought to welcome and we to, ought to give full support, especially given the protracted crisis uh, in Senegal, which uh, almost, you know, uh, block this chance of the news. But despite that, uh, despite all these odds, they are able to make it. So I thought, and I think that uh, uh, the world ought to have come and join, uh, you know, in uh, this happy, happy, uh, you know, success uh, in uh, Senegal. Uh, and uh, we also have to be happy with it because of the trend that is going on now in the area where you have upsurge of military coups, and that here. Uh, Senegal is holding on, uh, you know, it is uh, perhaps the only country in the sub-region that uh, has not experienced uh, uh, military. So I think it's a good omen that uh, now okay. and uh, let's cross our fingers and hope that uh, given the massive support that it has from the use. Well, is this not a, a pointer to the fact that his administration may be mad with a lot of uh, problems because he doesn't have the support of some of the people we expected to support him? One of the things that he talked about when he was sworn in is that he was passionate about Africa's unity. And we understand, whether we say it in harsh tones or we don't say it at all, that whenever any leader rises up and talks about the unity of Africa, he does not ever have the blessings of the West because when Africa is united or if Africa is united, there's going to be a different song being sung in the, on the continent. So uh, don't you think it's his campaign, his manifesto, and what he stands for could have been responsible for this uh, unacceptance uh, from the, the other world leaders? Yeah, I think it is... Uh part of the, the problem, a part of the issue. You know, he took, um, right uh, when he was campaigning, he took a very tough stance, especially on uh, uh, his former, the former colonial mentor, France. Uh, he talked about uh, the need of uh, all these Western powers to uh, allow African countries to do their own affairs, that they shouldn't uh, be meddling in the affairs of the uh, continent. So I think that will be part of the reason why we haven't seen that, uh, especially given the fact that uh, France still has a very strong influence on its former colonies. Uh, maybe it is the one that is pushing them not to come. Uh, so that is one thing. So what all this uh, scene shows uh, is that uh, it is going to face a very tough time. So uh, the way out for him now is not just to uh, uh, rely on rhetorics, but to uh, to try to build a very credible team. Because if you are saying they if they don't have experience and so on, which African leader, which one leader has uh, experience in governance? Uh, you know, the success of a leader depends on uh, you know his position and on the team that is uh, able to do. So it's a teamwork. So if he's able to do that, uh, he's going to. Uh, weather the storm, we go to weather the challenges and uh, make it. But I, all these things are indication that uh, rough times are ahead. So we have to tighten this belt and build a, a credible team uh, in order to make it. Rough times are ahead. Well, let's bring that home to Nigeria. Federal government finalizes electricity subsidy. That, this is from the Guardian newspaper. Federal government fed finalizes electricity subsidy removal, plans 200% tariff hike. What do you think about that? Now we're well, hearing that the uh, gas... Uh, the Guardian and uh, also Daily Trust carry the same issue. Uh, this is uh, one of the major problems of uh, our policies here, that we are just, uh, you know, it's trial and error. One... Uh, this is going to be a very, very costly uh, thing, not only to the electric, uh, electricity consumers, but to the nation as a whole. By the time the government says they are raising it from, let's say, 65 uh, Naira 
per unit, 200 naira per unit. Uh, they, they are just looking at one direction that they are going to make money from that, which is about 200 percent of what uh, uh, they are selling it now. But they haven't looked at the impact of uh, this increase uh, on other sectors. You know, there's definitely this will raise inflation, you know. Secondly, it will lead to the collapse of many industries because electricity is uh, perhaps one of the cheapest or even one of the cheapest source of energy and the main source of energy for industries. Now, by the time we raise it to such a uh, level, many uh, you know, power companies are going to collapse or so, uh, at least those who are able to survive it, they are going to raise their costs uh, you know, of uh, production in order to recuperate this huge amount of uh, uh, money. So I think the government is uh, just being uh, more penny-wise and pound foolish by raising the electricity. After all, we are just, we are just finished uh, saying that uh, there is hope that uh, uh, diesel is coming down. But now if you raise electricity, you are just compounding the problem. And uh, we are going to see so many uh, you know, problems and challenges in our uh, economy as a result of this decision to raise uh, uh, the tariff of electricity. And uh, the unfortunate thing is that they are talking of they are trying to do it within weeks of having that. So I think uh, all this will not occur well for the country. Yeah, especially now that we're we're, we're hearing whether they they officially say. The tariff goes up 200 percent or not the gas supply to these uh, people who supply us electricity is going up by maybe more than a hundred percent and then uh, we're expecting that when the review is done the tariff will go high naturally even without the government having to do anything and then we're talking about uh, electricity and then we've seen uh, somewhere like the uch on on the punch newspaper it carried that uh, uh, disconnection, UCH doctors suspend night shift, begin strike on Tuesday. And also on the Guardian newspaper, we've also seen this, the, the story like that about uh, UCH um, uh, staff scaling down work hours over power outage. This is a hospital where lives are saved, uh, supposed to be saved. And then there are no night shifts only day shifts because of this connection to a facility like a big hospital like UCH. And it's worrisome for me. Uh, the tariffs have not even gone up, but the amount of uh, money being owed the discos and whoever is responsible is so much that these connections are being made. Even we hear, hear that uh, Ministry of Power, at some point they were telling us that they were owing. Asurok it was even owing, and so many other ministries and power sitters were owing the electricity suppliers. And we don't know where we're going. Now the tariff is about to go up again, and I, uh, I, I mean, I don't understand. Yeah, it's not that we don't know where we are going, it's just we don't like uh, to know where we are going. Because all this thing is showing that we are going down the drain. Uh, we are heading up towards a uh, uh, you know, uh, crisis. Uh, because if uh, you have hospital like that, you know, uh, shutting down, and uh, then uh, perhaps a strike there, and then the cost... We are just by city all these things will uh, eventually uh, wrong for the government. I uh, think all seeing is you know, the primary responsibility of the government is uh, the lives and the welfare of its own citizens. Excess of government in terms of uh, how much revenue they generate and uh, how much subsidy they remove. And uh, we are what is happening in UCH uh, that uh, they are going to uh, have a strike. You know, it is the ordinary person that is going to be seriously affected. And uh, these are some of the things that uh, I was uh, alluding to earlier on when I say the hike and these things will 
uh, generate social problems. Because even the issue of Japa, we are going to see a lot of it. Many people, you know, they, they uh, enable the environment, conducive environment for people to work or not be there. And those who have the means will jump on ship and they will uh, maybe uh, go to green and coastal. That would be another thing. And there will be incessant strikes, uh, you know, on this issue. And uh, there will be high inflation as a result of this issue. And there is going to be, uh, you know, an increase in the poverty, uh, you know, uh, and the hunger in the country. So I think what the government ought to do is to rethink over this issue and not consider itself as a business venture where uh, today you remove subsidy there, uh, tomorrow you increase price, this one, and so on. And, and it's high time uh, that the government should have a rethink on these INF World Bank uh, sponsored uh, policies because of the negative impact that they have and because uh, the way they are leading us into. Uh, just as uh, this hospital shows, I believe, I uh, fear again that uh, there could be similar things all over. Perhaps it, uh, it, it may not be uh, very late, I mean, too long, when perhaps other sectors will join in the strike. Uh, labor will do it, the medical sector and other things, they will all join in terms of that. I hope it will not take us to that, and I hope the government will have a receipt, like I say, on these issues. Okay, um, some people are receiving the news of the crash of the dollar with a pinch of salt. Some people are staying positive. 1,280 1, Naira to a dollar at official parallel markets. Uh, that is what the Naira is selling right now. Did you receive that news with excitement, or you're still just... Uh, uh, waiting to see what happens. Yeah, I received it too, uh, mixed feelings. On one hand, you know, I'm very hopeful that, uh, you know, the, the, the coming down of the dollar, uh, you know, is a good thing, it's a show, it's a sign of things. But uh, on the other hand, I'm pessimistic that uh, this is uh, too little, too late, that we just have it. You know, we have to go back. Uh, before this administration, before we have to go to back to less than a year. When the dollar was about uh, 700, 600 plus to 700, now it is uh, 100 and uh, uh, 1,200 plus, which is almost twice what it, uh, it was in uh, two years, in, in just less than a year. And uh, so we are seeing the effect and we are feeling the effect of that. Remember, Nigeria is a consumer country. And uh, the, by the time we raise dollar to such level, everything is what we are seeing now uh, as a result of this uh, devaluation of our currency. So, I, like I said earlier on, the government should have a rethink on this uh, neoliberal uh, policy. Uh, it's just too late, it's just, uh, you know, palliative, if we can call it, uh, to, for the government to say now it is one. In thousand two hundred and eighty. This one that uh, uh, we are just kidding. We are just playing with uh, you know the situation because unless unless we support the naira, unless the government support the naira, unless the while naira you know uh, is strong, in all the situation that we are having now in terms of inflation terms of poverty, in terms of hunger, unemployment, and uh, you know, the collapse of uh, industries, uh, we are just going to see it uh, uh, continue, which I think I don't, uh, nobody prays for that, but uh, uh, we should expect it. Well, so you don't see any um, impact on the cost of commodities in the market uh, by the crash of this dollar. You don't see it having a, any impact on, on anything else? Because for now, anyway, mm -hmm. the, we have not seen any impact because nothing has come down because of the da dollar crashing. But do you think mm -hmm. there is hope? No, no. You see, one of, one of the problems of our inflation is attitude, is behavior. Okay? Even if uh, it comes down lower than this 
uh, people would not uh, be willing uh, to readily, you know, adjust their price downwards. Uh, our attitude, the attitude of our, you know, market people is such that, uh, or business people is such that they are quick to raise prices, but they are very slow and very unwilling to bring it down uh, despite uh, what happened. So uh, at, least, at least, you know, the government uh, takes action also in this direction. We will not see it. Even if uh, today, uh, assuming uh, the dollar comes to what it was uh, 10 months ago, that is about uh, from 670 to 700 naira, we will not likely go and see a a reversal in terms of or a decrease in terms of inflation quickly but um you know some may be able to do it but uh, we are not going to go to uh have it the way we used to have it so like i said part of the problem is also attitudinal and behavioral uh we are quick uh, to raise money you know cost prices and we are not really uh, ready to bring it down when factors uh, necessitate bringing them down. Well, you talked about hunger, and then uh, still on Daily Trust this morning, there's a story saying Ondo residents loot truck conveying Tinubu branded grains. We've seen this happen in Abuja, we've seen this happen elsewhere, and now it is happening again in Ondo state. Residents loot truck conveying Tinubu branded grains. I mean, what do you say? You see, this, this, is, this is part of what I said earlier on. It is, we are living on, we are sitting on a cake of uh, gunpowder. It's a time bomb. Because hunger, you know, uh, is, is such that it propels people to, to do whatever uh, they, even an imaginable thing. And secondly, there is this issue of uh, copycat syndrome, that it happens somewhere, and uh, some other people are going to do it, and so on. These are some of the things that should indicate or should tell the readers that something is wrong in Nigeria and we cannot continue with this kind of policy, thinking that uh, uh, people, Nigerians, uh, like we said, they, they are the most happiest people in the world. We suffer and smile, suffering and smiling in Nigeria. We shouldn't take that uh, for granted because by the time it, uh, you know, Become spontaneous in so many places. Uh, it would be too difficult and too hard. I mean, uh, it would be impossible for the government to uh, arrest it. Look at what happened with uh, NSAS uh, crisis. You know, it, it started in some places, pocket of places, and you know, the leadership then uh, refused to take action. And uh, until it exploded and become a serious uh, challenge, that is when they take it. And, and also look at what happened with uh, COVID palliatives. When it started in some places before we met it, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's spread to other places. And this issue of also trucks being attacked, uh, you know, uh, it uh, has started, you know, in one place here and there. But like I say, the, the thing is, such that it is an indicator that uh, if nothing is done by the leadership, we are going to have a very serious uh, problem on uh, this issue of looting, this issue of, you know, uh, thing because like uh, one adage in a language is saying, uh, the stomach is the legislative chamber of uh, a human body. Meaning hunger is what makes laws and what decide control the brain and action of the person. So unless we do that and address uh, this issue, I think what we are seeing now will be just uh, a child play. Mm. My people have that saying too. Uh, what is in the stomach is what carries the one in the head. So <laughs> unless you feed well, uh, you may not reason well. And, um, but, you know, I, I don't know, what's the craze about branding these things in the first place? I, I'm not saying the people who stole it or who 
um, who, who, who cutted away all the bags of rice or whatever grains there were did well. But what's the craze about branding these things? This is from Governor Dees, and you put a photograph there. This is from Tinubu, uh, you put a photograph there. What's the craze about this branding in the first place? These are things that should come to the people as uh, help from the government, as a right to them even. And then you're branding and putting your name like you're doing something that is, is, is unheard of. Like you, you are a saint or something. I, I don't understand why these things are done in the first place. Yeah, you see, in the first place, uh, I do not know whether they will discuss support to help condemn that. But, uh, you know, we will make the meeting. But this branding, it's just part of the Nigerian politics, you know. We uh, tend to the leadership tend to show that whatever they do to the people is not their right, but is a, a privilege, is a favor that they are doing it. Uh, you know, initially this kind of branding uh, used to be uh, other um, uh, ceremonies, like uh, you know, when there is going to be like national uh, uh, day or anything. The house will be, they were used to it when they, you know, they will have uh, clothes with pictures of the leaders and then people will come and do it. Now it becomes a campaign issue that uh, whenever there is going to be a campaign, then you, you have people putting in, uh, their pictures and names on items so that uh, they can now convince the electorate that uh, uh, they are uh, the ones that uh, will do them uh, good. But now, the whole at this time, when after the campaign, the government is doing it, it shows the, the level uh, you know, of inconsideration and intolerance of our leadership uh, to the wishes of the Nigerians. Okay? Uh, it shows also the leadership has take, is taking the people for granted that uh, they will now display and have uh, small bags here and there and they will give them, you know, having their own pictures or perhaps they will do what they call palliatives. They will select some people and give them uh, 25,000 or 35,000 all in the name of showing that the government is, uh, uh, you know, doing them a favor. So I think uh, uh, the reason is more of politics I don't know, then any uh, consideration of the welfare of the people is just political consideration. That is why you have it. And the, the dangerous aspect uh, of this situation is that people uh, in, you know, may not bother uh, to discriminate between, uh, you know, palliatives coming from the politicians and, uh, you know, the uh, goals of... Uh, uh, private people. So by the time uh, you know they, they, there is this looting here and there, cutting our tracking, uh, you know uh, these things and cutting our visit on government issues, we don't think it is going to expand. We are, uh, I'm just, I don't want to say it, but uh, uh, we are very likely going to see it, uh, you know, the generating it all public uh, transport, private transport, and if care is not taken, they will even go to stores and market and start uh, doing these things. And then this is a recipe for anarchy. Like I said, what the government ought to do, take lesson and take uh, precautionary measures uh, before it is too late. Well, uh, maybe I, I don't know the... the the terms in law, but I think this is misappropriation because uh, money is voted by the government, the people's money is voted for a particular thing, and then you're supplying that thing, I know, but with your name, as if it is coming from your pocket, that for me is stealing or misappropriation or something, one word that is really not good enough. So when, when something is voted for somebody and you're, you're putting your name like you're the one who is giving, palliatives come, to the people uh, from money that is voted voted by the government and you're putting your photograph, you're putting your, I, I mean, I don't know. But in Kebbi State, um, the governor, that is on Nature News, Governor Idris probes agric warehouse looting in Kebbi. You know, we're just talking about looting. Uh, sometimes they loot trucks, sometimes they loot warehouses. Now people know where government warehouses are and when they're hungry enough, they go there and loot it. Whether it is because they are hungry or because they are just thieves, 
but something gave them the opportunity to do that. Something gave them the, the heart, the, the strength to do that, the confidence to do that. So I don't know. The governor is probing the looting of the warehouse. You see, the problem is, uh, is just going to be, uh, you know, a wasteful exercise because this is a mob action. Okay, perhaps the way they will do is uh, maybe they say they identify the leaders and some of the innocent people will be victimized on that. And uh, secondly, you know, probably will not bring an end to the issue. On the contrary, it is going to add uh, fuel, I mean, fuel to the fire. Because by the time you do it, and people now begin to lose hope that uh, all what the leadership is about is to suppress them, and come down heavily on them, I believe when, uh, you know, they find an opportunity, it is going to be worse. So I think uh, what the government ought to do is not just to, uh, you know, uh, set up a prop and investigate the situation, but they should take action, they should take measures. After all, you see, uh, we are blaming all of the federal government alone, but even the state governments you know, are to be blamed. For example, KB uh, is one of the major rice producing states in the country, mm. and uh, actually each state has uh, an area you know, in terms of agriculture that it has some competitive advantage. The governments ought to have also invest on that, especially given the fact that uh, we are being told that now with the removal of oil subsidy, that uh, the, 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 the allocation to state has almost doubled. So we, we should see uh, also the governors coming in on this issue. We, we shouldn't only blame the federal government alone, but also the governors, you see, the leadership collectively should address these uh, issues rather than to wait when it happens in an outside committee to investigate and so on. And you know what they say about committee in, in, in administration? That a committee is uh, a group of unpeed doing the uh, uh, you know, unwanted for the unwilling. So when you can set a committee, the governor is not willing to do anything, he will set a committee and then to do the dirty job and nothing will happen. At the end of it, it will be a way of just wasting public resources and nothing will happen uh, after uh, the April. Okay, well, let's hope that something will happen and uh, let's, uh, let's be proven wrong. Uh, but um, when you talk about committees and all that, uh, there's also another, another uh, story here on Nature News. Energy Commission to promote clean cooking awareness across Nigeria's geopolitical zone. Is that not an exercise in futility? Knowing that the price of gra gas is going up, the price, of um, the price of kerosene is up, and so many other things. Electricity tariff is going up, so you cannot have a hot plate in your house because you can't pay uh, the bills. Uh, so clean, clean, clean energy. I don't know what they're, they're talking about. Promote clean cooking uh, awareness. Okay, you cannot you cannot use a, a hot plate. You cannot use a gas cooker. You cannot use anything that is supposed to constitute clean cooking. And I don't know how this awareness campaign is going to be successful when people are going back to firewood because they cannot afford gas anymore. They cannot afford kerosene anymore. They cannot uh, afford to use hot plate because of the electricity tariff. So is this not an, 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 an action in futility? Anyway, it is. Okay, this is what I said earlier on that the government should, should not consider it, itself as a business venture which should put uh, the, the welfare of Nigeria first. And secondly, the government should be wary of the fact that there is uh, a linkage between all these policies and other sectors of the economy. Well, gas is very expensive, so you cannot expect uh, people not to eat. And uh, you know, the end result is they will be using uh, firewood, and then we will be back uh, to square one on the issue of the uh, greenhouse effect, uh, you know, uh, 
global warming and other things, so they, there will be deforestation and so many places. Uh, secondly, uh, the government uh, you know, who, uh, is talking about clean cooking is also denying the fact that uh, in Nigeria, over 70% of Nigerians are in uh, rural uh, areas, not in urban areas. So uh, the, many of them don't even have never seen even let uh, gas is let alone gas cooker. And now by the time you are making it this way, you are raising the price in urban areas also where people are using gas and other electrical uh, materials, uh, you know, to, to cook. They will resort back to uh, you know uh, the traditional way of uh, you know uh, of firewood. And that will help a uh, serious thing. So I think uh, it is an exercise in futility uh, what they are trying to do now. The only way out is let them bring down the cost of gas. Uh, that will encourage many people to uh, stay on it. And that uh, will minimize all the effects that we are seeing about uh, you know, uh, deforestation uh, and so on. Oh, well, um, let's hope that um, uh, the best will come. Uh, quarter one, or the first quarter of 2024, was really, really tough. And we're hoping that the second quarter and subsequent quarters will be better. Uh, just that I'm afraid that uh, on that Nature News, there's a small headline there that scares me. And uh, La Sepa raises alarm on low air quality in Lagos State. I live in Lagos, so <laughs> I hope that the air quality, they will look into it and see how uh, the environment can be kept clean so that we can breathe fresh air and live longer for our families and all that. would like to thank you, Professor uh, Fage, for coming on the program this morning. It's always a pleasure having you join us. Thank you very much for having me. Mm. Okay, we've been talking with uh, Professor Camilo Sanifage, and he was uh, with us on Off the Press. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll take our only hot topic this morning. Stay with us. <laughs>